Welcome to Winchester News Online with Stuart Appleby. Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. Here are today's top stories. Winchester councillor in Homeless Centre Row. Woeful Winchester remain rock bottom. And Winchester's one woman band is drumming up success. An outspoken Winchester politician has slammed managers of one of the South's biggest charities. The attack follows damning criticism of the way Trinity Winchester is run by an official watchdog. Joey Lipscomb reports. They've, they've got good intentions, but good intentions don't pay the bills. Councillor Elaine Berry claims that the Trinity Centre is still doing good work, but is providing far too many extra services which are not financially efficient. And then still not forgetting what they initially should be doing. And that is providing open arms, comfort, and all the information, be whatever that is, to the traveller. But when I spoke to workers at the charity, they claim they're far from wasting money and that the council is not paying nearly enough. But really, when you think the city council give us 20% of our funding, that's... Um, not much. As in any role, it doesn't feel good to be criticised, but then a lot of people don't fully understand what the role is here. I think, I think at the moment, um, they must get their priority right. Now, this is a golden opportunity to get it right, and it's no good uh, being um, taking things personal, because if you took everything anybody ever said personal, you'd never get nothing done. Jerry Lipscomb, Winchester News Online. A previously convicted paedophile was sentenced yet again at Winchester Crown Court this week. Thomas Hobbs investigated. Bernard Vickery, 53 years old, was sentenced at Winchester Crown Court to eight years imprisonment. Mr Vickery was found guilty of six counts of sexual abuse towards three youths. A relative of one of the victims had this to say. For legal reasons, their identity has been protected. Um, he'd done it again uh, before, I should say, and he only done not even half the sentence he got, and that was on three boys. So this time should have been a lot longer. Now he's going to go to a prison where they're... Sorry, the only way I can put it is they're all like that. So he's not going to learn because he's going to do it to young boys in there, does any? No, it's, it riles me up just to think about it. The court heard from the prosecution of the ordeal the boys suffered at the hands of Mr Vickery. The prosecution described Mr Vickery as using roughhousing tactics on the youths, threatening them with violence if they spoke out. Mr Vickery, who pleaded guilty, was already a registered sex offender and had previously served 18 months for indecent assault. Judge Barnett described his crimes as terrible and said Mr Vickery posed a serious threat to young boys and to society. As well as the eight-year sentence, Mr Vickery will be registered for life on the sex offenders list. This is Thomas Hobbs from Winchester News Online. Students have had their voices heard about parking issues this week in a forum held by Tommy Geddes. Parking at the university has been a difficult issue for students and staff. We do have a big demand for parking relative to the amount of spaces that we've got. We've got about 450 spaces, we've got about 800, 900 people that want to use those spaces. So at peak times it does, it does get a bit difficult. Obviously the council are very concerned about restricting single car use, particularly coming into the city centre, and they class the university as being in the city centre. Justin Richmond thinks the new park and ride opening in April will provide some relief for students as it will be a good link to the university. However, decisions are yet to be made. As the nation continues to battle with winter illness, Winchester News Online takes a look into the closure of local hospital wards thanks to a particularly nasty seasonal bug. The Royal Hampshire County Hospital has been forced to close two of its wards following an outbreak of the highly infectious neurovirus bug. The bug, which induces vomiting and diarrhoea, has hit around 30 people and the wards are set to remain closed for the rest of the week.
It's a really, really infectious virus that's very easily passed from person to person. It causes vomiting and diarrhoea. At the moment, we've got patients affected on two wards in the hospital, so we've actually closed those wards to new admissions and are controlling the cases to make sure that nobody else in the hospital gets it. There are more outbreaks this year than in previous years. There are, uh, 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 as of last week, 214 individual outbreaks in hospitals alone. That's not even you know, including uh, 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 community outbreaks um, across the country. So it's, it's, it's a big problem this year. We're working very hard in the hospital to contain any spread of norovirus between patients and we hope that we'll be able to reopen all the wards, that well, the two wards that are closed, by the end of this week. With the highest amount of norovirus outbreaks seen this year, it's clear that further ward closures are inevitable, affecting both the local and wider community. John Hopley, Winchester News Online. That's it for the news and now over to Lucy Pilgrim with the sport. Thanks, Stu. After Winchester beat Twickenham 12-8 earlier this season, they were hoping to satisfy the home fans and complete a double over the Londoners. Jason Curtis was in the thick of the action. Winchester looked to end their run of bad form when they played Twickenham at the weekend. Winchester started poorly, having Stuart Morton sin binned early on. Twickenham made the most of the extra man, scoring after 25 minutes. With losing a regular occurrence for Winchester, coach Mike Marchant found himself in a familiar position. Winchester got back into the game just before half-time after a period of sustained pressure on the Twickenham back row. Winchester's frailties were soon exposed again, with Twickenham extending their lead just a couple of minutes later. At the half-time whistle, Twickenham led by seven points. Twickenham emerged from half-time the stronger and scored early in the second half to extend their lead to 17 points to five. Winchester gave themselves a glimmer of hope, scoring with 15 minutes left, but they were unable to breach the Twickenham defence again. After their latest defeat, coach Mike Marchant looks to the future and reveals his plans. I, th I think any time you lose at any sport, it, it's tough to say you're pleased, but I think if we look on paper at what the throughput of players have reached to us over the last four or five years, we have really taken a step forward. Uh, it's interesting to note we can put a team of teenagers out from 1 to 15 and have bench, which is the first time in, in, in my knowledge of the club we've ever done that. I think the other thing is we're trying to change the culture so that youngsters can play first team rugby before they go to university. We've had a number of internationals that come through Winchester. None have played adult rugby at Winchester. They've all gone off because they haven't been old enough or good enough. And what we've got to do is recognise what we as a club can offer the community we're in and the broader game. And I would you know, I would suggest at this point in time that's a good amateur club. In the non-league, it was mixed results for our local teams. After Eastleigh's 8-2 drubbing at the, home, at the hands of Furrock at the weekend, manager Ian Baird was hoping for a change in fortune. They got that last night when they visited Basingstoke Town. Midfielder Anthony Riviere scored the winner for the Spitfires as they kept their slim playoff hopes alive. AFC Totten continued their impressive run of form with victory over Andover at the weekend. Goals from Ian Richardson and James Taylor secured the home side a 2-0 win and the three-point moves them ahead of third place Poulton Rovers. Bournemouth Poppies were unable to keep the pressure up at the top of the Wessex League as their match with Arlesford Town fell foul of the weather. That's all for sport today. Now back over to Stu. Thank you, Lucy. And finally, women all over Winchester have a new ambassador for their rights. Professor June Boyce-Tillman, a lecturer at the university, held a concert on campus to showcase her one-woman band. Veronica Friedel went along to talk to her. Professor June Boyce-Tillman is not a stereotypical musician, so what are her reasons for performing as a one-woman band? Well, I was taken up with the images of women that our society sees, and as you can see, I'm not the right shape. Um, to perform as a woman. Um, I'm also much older than most women, and what you see is what you've got. There's no Botox on me at all. <laughs> so I was taken up with what a woman's body um, that's large and older can do. And I looked at storytelling, which women have traditionally done around fires and things like this. And I gradually put together over a period of time uh, pieces which involved movement, Storytelling, Inspired song. by medieval women musician. and the mystics of bygone age, Professor Tillman hopes her act will help break down the social barriers surrounding women and their image. It's in terms of 
challenging the traditional roles, the traditional shape of a woman, uh, and all of that, that I think, I hope will empower women um, in a way that perhaps they haven't been empowered in the past. Well, that's certainly music to my ears. Well, thank you for watching. Join us again next week, and for the latest developments, log on to winnell.co.uk.